Hey friends, Bricky here with another episode of Adventures in Design, WYFP, our series where on Wednesdays I ask you, hey, what's your fucking problem? And today I was joined by Connie Collinsworth as my celebrity co-host, and I had no guests. Nobody else showed up. <laughs> Partially my problem because I haven't really found a regular time to record every week, which I'm doing that on purpose because I don't want to catch the same folks every time. But I have to say, I'm really hoping that this series becomes a place where people that are members of the Circle of Trust could come together and talk about career problems, work through some different things, some different obstacles, and try to find a positive outcome. And in the process, help others through whatever that obstacle may be. Although for some reason, I just don't feel like I'm catching anyone. So I'm going to assume that everybody who's listening has their shit together, has zero problems, and everything is going just the way they planned. But Connie, who recorded with me yesterday, fantastic episode where we broke down more about Woodstock 1999 saw that I did this with the community and she said that would be fun to hang out with you and other circle of trust people but it ended up just being the two of us and don't even worry about it because today's episode is the most fun I've had recording in such a long time. So it ended up being a win as it always does. If you want to be a part of next week's episode of WYFP, any circle of trust members are welcome to show up at noon Pacific standard time, Tuesday, September 21st. I want to talk about NFTs, uh, my opinion on that is changing as I'm learning more and more about it. I also would like to talk about the iPad as a creative tool and its evolution of going from kind of uh, a media browser fun thing you had in your house to a real center of creativity and whatever your problems may be. I am encouraging you if you're banging your head against the wall, if you feel lost, if you feel stuck show up, let's work it out, let's talk it out, and take others along with us. What do you say we get started with this week's episode of WYFP with my good friend, Connie Collinsworth? And today's show is nothing but fucking problems. Connie Collinsworth, how you doing, friend? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Welcome to WYFP, which is a show uh, where we say, hey, what's your fucking problem? But it seems as if nobody has any problems because no one decided to show up today, but you did as my first celebrity co-host. And you know what? I'm glad I didn't let everybody know that you were going to be here. Because I didn't need a bunch of Connie maniacs just showing up just to try to suck your dick so it can be just you and me ripping through some topics. And and I have one that I, I want to dive into here. Uh, what, what is your relationship with the news now in the post-Trump era? Um, You know, all during Trump era, I was every day CNN was on. I think that's why my TV watching suffered <laughs> because I just let that thing run in the background and and. I also think that my mental health suffered from that. But um, well, you felt that, like uh, sorry to talk over you, but when you let yeah. CNN or I let my, I was an MSNBC guy, you felt like I don't want to turn it off because the good part's getting ready to happen. It, it's like being at the movies and I, I got to pee. I got to yes. pee. Well, what am I going to miss? And is somebody going to have to talk to me for 10 more minutes and fill me in when I get back from the bathroom? So I know what the hell's going on in this high price movie that I'm at. Uh, yeah, it's 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 it was a a mess but my relationship with it now is i feel like that the world isn't going to end if i miss something that's out there so i basically scroll through the google news on my phone i scroll through that stupid facebook news because i do want to get my little bit of celebrity gossip in um and and oddities that they put in which is one of those things that i wouldn't have known about that what we're talking about today unless i was scrolling through those things yeah for me it was uh letting go of the news let go of like just that constant noise in the background of my life. But I don't regret doing that because I use the news as therapy. And, you know, some, some people during Trumpism decided to look the other way. They thought that that was the best play for 
them, their mental health, and I can't do anything about it, so why bother? And as much as I get that and respect it, and I'm not talking shit about it, I'm just talking about my own perspective on that was like it sounds to me a lot like white privilege just me personally that's you know like oh there's something bad's happening but i can just look the other way because it doesn't really bother me you know i'm not a muslim i'm not this i'm not that like you know it doesn't really bother me so yeah it sucks but it only makes me more upset so for me keeping that constant drip on it at least made me feel like i knew how bad it was getting and it also allowed me to sort of have a projection of where it was all going and it's just one of those things where i'm wired that today for example i'm coming home from the grocery store and these two little dogs are running across the street and it's uh by this area where we live called marine stadium where it's a really really nice park so over on the sidewalk by the ocean, there's just a gaggle of, you know, older women walking their dogs in their Lululemon outfits. You know, it's like a just a, a mob of like maybe eight, ten ladies that get together and do their power walk with their dogs every morning. So they're all like an uproar that these two little cute dogs are running in the street. So I'm the lead car coming up to the dogs. So I stop my car to give the dogs time. Well, the guy behind me. He's going to try to pass, pass me on the left. So I take my car and I go hard cut to the left and I bottle that like I stop him. And I just sit there. Like, so now my car is at like a 30, 40 degree angle. I'm pretty much blocking traffic coming from my direction. So this motherfucker thinks he's going to pass me on the right. So I, I nail the car as fast as I can, cut the wheel to the right. And now my car does a complete 180 and I completely stop him. <laughs> and I get out of my car. And I walk around and I go, you motherfucker, calm down. There is a dog in the road and I'm stopping traffic so you don't run around me and hit them. I did this, Connie, to probably a 65, 70-year-old guy that looked like Rembrandt. And as I walked up to his window, I scared the fucking shit out of the guy. And the guy goes, clunk, to his power lock. <laughs> He thought he was getting ready to get drug out and beat right there on the road. Dude, I was, it, it, it makes me so mad because in this situation of crisis, if everybody just calms down, just like, oh, this car in front of me just stopped and I'm in a park where there's kids and dogs and people crossing, maybe there's something ahead in the road, you know? And so that was me for four years of the guy who was willing to stop traffic get involved and not just go, nah, I need to go where I need to go. Fuck everybody else. Or eh, can't do anything about it. And there's been so many times I was so close to saving a dog's life. And it's that motherfucker that honks the horn that scares the dog off or drives around and almost hits me and the dog. So when I yelled at that guy today, I was really yelling at like 10 guys before him that I was had my hand on a dog and I couldn't work my way over to the car to be like, just fucking calm down, man. There's something happening here. Yeah, he's the guy who in terms of the political uh, comparison you're making there, he'll run up on that dog, slam on the brakes, get mad, honk, and then yell at the people with the dogs or the dog because they're in his way. Right. And he's not getting to where he needs to go. And it got resolved. There was a guy who was jogging and I don't know if he had dropped the leash or they, you know, you let your dogs out of the car and maybe they just like go the wrong way out of the tailgate of the car. I don't know what had happened, but because we were able to stop traffic, it all got resolved. Now, because of my look, six foot tall, covered in tattoos, the ladies that were trying to help the dog, they all go, it's okay, man. You can calm down. <laughs> they saw how I was ready to fucking kill this guy behind me. And as I drove by and the guy had got his dogs, he like looked up and had noticed that I had stopped traffic. And he gave me like a quick like wave or, or thumbs up yeah. or whatever. But. That rim rant looking motherfucker behind me. I was ready to kill him. I was ready to kill him, Connie. <laughs> I wish I'd have seen him like push the button and the <laughs> lock just go down. <laughs> well, you know, nowadays it's like automated. So I don't know where the button was, but as I walked it too much, I heard the kunk, and I'm like, right. oh, he just power locked because he literally thinks like, I'm not letting this maniac pull me out of the fucking yeah. car. 
What he didn't know was that if pushed, that lock isn't going to stop you. You'll just break that fucking <laughs> oh, window out. I'll go right through it. I'll go right through it. All right. So something that I've been seeing in the news, because I too have kind of taken a big step back. I saw this story. I'm going to play a clip from one week ago. Uh, Good morning, America. Let me get this so that you can see it as well as we're having a good time here. All right. So this story, I saw the story in passing. South Carolina murder murder mystery deepens after a month. Connie, it was one of those things where I was like walking through the room and I saw it on and go, mother and son murdered, guy still around. The fucking husband did this. No, yeah. no, no doubt about it. So let's play this clip from a week ago, and then we'll see if we can find one, because I think some news broke over last night. But let's just get the background going here. The breaking news overnight involving a murder mystery. Alec Murdoch, whose wife and son were shot to death in an unsolved case three months ago, was found shot himself in South Carolina. Hey, do you think the mom's kind of sexy? Yeah, I can see. I can picture her in her youth. Oh, for sure. was a looker back in the day. Yeah, cheerleader for sure. Sorority girl, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> I love that you just created a backstory for her. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, a South Carolina man whose wife and son were brutally murdered in June, now recovering after someone shot him this weekend. A family spokesperson telling ABC News that... All right. This Ooh. is... <laughs> this photo hey she's definitely i mean you know beth is way more attractive than i am that's just that's a law of being a man uh but there's a big point spread between these two but dude the only thing this guy has is a bank account what oh you can tell you can you can totally tell that you know worked hard made some money uh but if you take out allegedly if you take out your wife and son it's always when the criminal, the, the part-time criminal, this isn't Tony Soprano. Yeah. It's always when the part-time criminal sort of like circles back around a second time to try to fix it or clean it up. That's always the biggest red herring. And that's normally when they do themselves in. So I can't wait to hear this next part of this. That Alec Murdoch was changing a tire on the side of the road in rural Hampton County Saturday when a car passed him, turned around, and someone shot him in the head. He was airlifted to a hospital in Charleston. We are told he is conscious and speaking. Murdoch's brother is sitting down with us back in... So they shot him in the head. That's interesting because I was... When I heard that he got shot, I was assuming that he had paid somebody to come by and like shoot him in his thigh. You know what I mean? So they'd be like, look, they're after me too. This is pretty hardcore. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, my dad had that dirtbag wife that um, <laughs> was always like just drama and most horrible person on the planet. And she was trying to pull uh, sympathy. So she tried to kill herself. She shot herself in the side, Mark, in the kidney. Whoa. She shot herself in the side, but she was too dumb to aim away from organs and shot herself in the kidney. It's like, okay, you were just going for a, a, a skin wound here. <laughs> And then you fucked yourself all up. Hey, that's, that's a bad that's, spot to get hit. Yeah, that's this level right here. How did she recover from that? I mean, she recovered, but she's still just the same shit stain that she <laughs> ever was. So he's deceased now, but my mom, when she left Kentucky and moved to New York, she moved there with this guy that she'd been dating for a while. Um and he worked uh, high, or he worked somewhere with AT and T. You know, and this is back in the eighties before they were like the complete powerhouse they are today. I mean, they were big then, but now they're just like a, you know, a massive company. But she moved up to New York with him. That's how my mom goes from living in Kentucky to living in Long Island. He got transferred, and she needed a change of pace, so she goes up there. So then, <laughs> when my mom and this guy Paul broke up or separated, or whatever he started doing this thing to get attention from her. He'd call her and be like, I need help. And she's like, why? And he's like, I accidentally just swallowed like a screw or a nut or something. She goes, you just accidentally screw, like swallowed a screw or a nut. And he's like, yeah. So 
that's an easy thing to tell somebody like, you know, I was putting a smoke alarm in or I was doing this or doing that and I had it in my mouth and I swallowed it. So I got to, can you take me to the hospital? So my mom's like, yeah, of course. Cause you know, they were, they'd been living together for a long time. Yeah. So she, you know, you come back together in this moment of crisis. Well, then a couple of weeks or months go by, he swallowed something else. And that was small too. I think it was like a pin cap or something that would make sense would be in your mouth. But Connie, the grand finale. <laughs> he swallowed the whole screwdriver. <laughs> that would be a fucking amazing if he did. He swallowed a lighter. A Bic lighter. He swallowed a lighter. And my mom was like, this is where I get off this train. <laughs> Like, yeah, I, I mean, can't, you know, can't how, help how, you as, you, as you do when you're sitting around, you know, putting your lighter in your mouth. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> those things can happen, Mark. I mean, I don't know. Was he trying to do some sort of tribal tiki dance thing with the lighter? He got holding something, needed to light something, put it in his mouth. Swallowed a lighter. What a fucking maniac, right? So I do love that whatever redneck thing you can throw at me. <laughs> my dad had did a woman he, that shot herself for attention. I can go right back at you. <laughs> did he actually swallow the lighter? Yes. There was did they a, just did they have, make him just like pass it like you do a dog? I can't remember if it was no. I think they had to do surgery on that because of the uh, lighter fluid and shit that was inside man, of it. And, Mark, all I get from this is he was hurting. Man, he wanted your <laughs> mama back. Hey, he was hurting. And I can go even one deeper on this. Uh, best grandfather was a Buffalo fire chief. He was also was a, a veteran in the Navy and, um, but he was a, a fire chief his whole life. And, you know, he was this old guy that had too many grandkids that nobody really ever sat down and asked him anything about his life. So I'd always be like, Vince, what's up, bud? And I would just ask him like, just, I go all, like all into the minutia of his life. Cause I'm just fascinated with that type of stuff. And he told me this story where he's like, man, he's like, I was a, I was working the uh, downtown Buffalo. It was a cold night. We get an EMS call to this guy's house. He answers the door with a bandage around his uh, right hand or left hand, whatever. And there's just blood everywhere. And when we go, what's the problem? He goes, my hand is in my sink. I feel like I'm getting ready to pass out. So he's like, we go into his bathroom. His hand was sitting in his sink. He had hacksawed it off to get the attention of a girl that he had, a woman, wife or whatever that he had broken up with. And that's when I was like, Hey Vince, I got a story for you about my mom's boyfriend who swallowed a lighter. And he looked at me and he goes, that's crazier than my story, man. <laughs> Yeah, whoo, hacks on the hand, man. Could you imagine doing that? And I, I, like, at what point do you get through the hand? Because like, you know, when you start to like saw a branch, that first little bit, it's fun because you're like cutting, but then halfway through, like you get kind of fatigued and worn out. But are you just like, you get three quarters way through, and you're like, I'll show this fucking bitch. I'll show her I was the best thing that she ever had. Like, how's it work in your mind? Yeah, what chemical like of wanting that person blocks out i'm sawing through my tendons and bone right now like yeah. what blocks that i don't know that's crazy crazy all right let's get back into our south carolina murder <laughs> we are 38 seconds into the clip we are 16 minutes into our podcast <laughs> june did they have any enemies i really don't know of any enemies you hear all this talk on the you know social media with regard to paul but I don't know of anybody no. that would truly that would truly be an enemy or truly want to harm them. The brothers asking for the public's help after Alex's wife Maggie and their 22-year-old son Paul were found murdered at the family's hunting lodge. Hey, this family's got some money. The hunting lodge, yeah. And by the way, those one of those brothers is going to be played by Will Forte in the movie. <laughs> yes, because of his mouth, right? Yes. <laughs> Hey, this is another thing that Connie and I do. <laughs> we watch current events and we just send each other back IMDB links on who would play the people that are happening in it. What was it? The the Brett Kavanaugh? Um, yep. Where we were, we had cast out the entire thing. 
the entire the whole bunch of the people in the room. Yeah, we had it had it down. <laughs> now I think maybe Will Ferrell's gonna play this this Alex Murdoch guy. Oh, the dad? Yeah. To date, no suspects have been named, no arrests have been made. The Murdoch family, part of the legal establishment in the South Carolina Low Country, going back almost a century. Three generations of Murdochs held the solicitor's job in this region for years. They also own a prominent law firm. At the time of the. So that's lawyer money that pays for all this stuff because you can tell they're super well off. Yeah, that's at $450 an hour money. Yeah, yeah. For his, for his assistant. When he comes in the room, it goes up to $750. Yeah. Double murders, Paul had been awaiting trial, accused of being under the influence in 2019 while crashing a boat, killing 19 year old oh, passenger. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, I, I, wait his kid was in, a, in under charges? Let's scroll back. Could, hey, this is no wonder people are obsessed with this. This is pretty fascinating. Yeah. Murders, Paul had been awaiting trial, accused of being under the influence in 2019 while crashing a boat, killing 19 year old passenger Mallory Beach. That's the son? Yeah. Hey, this 19 year old is pretty hot. Uh, hey, I'm going to pause this for a minute, Mark, because I'm going to go Google how to write a screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get in on this early. Oh, you don't think that there's somebody someplace that's got every Google News alert going on this, like trying to put it yeah. all together? It's Ryan Murphy. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, about, we're gonna listen to that part just one more time because I want to really capture this part about the sun. Eminent law firm. At the time of the double murders, Paul had been awaiting trial, accused of being under the influence in 2019 while crashing a boat, killing 19-year-old passenger Mallory Beach. Nine one one, where's your emergency? What bridge is it? Paul? What bridge is this? All five of us are on the bank, but we're we're missing one person. <laughs> Please send someone. The charges. Wow. This is fucking fascinating. <laughs> they're missing. So he crashed the boat and they're missing someone. Is nobody going in that water looking for yeah. Mallory? Was that her name? I mean. Man, I didn't think this kid was that old. He looks like he's, I thought this was like a 17-year-old kid. That's what I thought, too. And I thought the other one was like younger. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That in that case were dropped in August due to Paul's death. But new documents recently released raising questions for the family as to how the boat crash investigation was handled. I think the, the one thing they want is accountability. And they're particularly offended that um, if it happened, if, if people tried to cover up what happened, they're, they're incredibly offended and they want that out. This guy is claiming that this is a case of street justice. Yeah, he's saying uh, this Paul son was responsible for somebody's daughter dying, mm -hmm. that the the parents did something to cover it up because they're this South Carolina legal dynasty, super connected. Right, powerful family. Yeah, and this other family, this shadow family that we don't know about yet over here, yeah. is going out and saying, somebody's going to pay for this. Hey, first off, Natalie is fucking smoking hot. And if she's hanging out with this guy, she's probably from a well-off family too. Yes. Right. I mean. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, they roll together. Yeah. Birds of a feather, and uh, you know, calling it the way it is. Wealthier people often are more attractive. Just saying it. I'm. You and me are diamonds in the rough. That we happen to be beautiful and poor, but you know, it's something that we fought our whole life. That's the title of our memoirs, right there. <laughs> Beautiful and poor. <laughs> I'm going to trademark that. But we could actually probably have like a line of fashions that like could be popular in like Japan on the street. Oh, yeah. Beautiful and poor. Oh, so it's already big over there. <laughs> we just got to show yeah. up. We just got to make the flight. Because <laughs> it shouldn't be that way. Meanwhile, the investigation into the Murdoch double murders uncovering new information about a different case, leading investigators to reopen a 2015 cold case, the death of Stephen Smith. <laughs> 2015 cold case? Body found more than six years ago in the middle of the road. Huh. There's a, there's a cross on the road, too. Yeah. yeah there's somebody still feeling that, that loss. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they fucking love that guy. Smith's body was found more than six years ago in the middle of a road in Hampton County. His family says how he died has long been in question. I'd be happy to see all this, you know, 
laid out on the table, you know, finding out who did it, you know, why they did it. <laughs> Connie? <laughs> We've got the twin sister, obviously not in the same, uh, you know, uh, financial sphere, maybe. I'm, I'm judging my mm-hmm. video, but that's what you do with these things. I'm yeah. sorry. I apologize. That's how we do you it. Know, when, when, <laughs> whenever I'm in some sort of tangle like this, there'll be many judgments made. Absolutely. But, yeah so we've got yeah another case that i guess maybe this guy was involved in and this is definitely a a a middle or lower class other family so now we're going straight justified on this yeah and it it feels like i'm just going out on a limb here they're saying body found in the middle of the street drunk driving type incident right like coming home fucked up you hit somebody and maybe you can get away with it if you've got power or now, down there in South Carolina, they may have just killed him and dumped him in the road. Oh, yeah, you're right. They're not that smart. What, I didn't so, learn anything obviously. from watching Justified for five years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're going straight Justified here now. I think we're getting into another level of crime. We've got this, you know, white collar-ish, hey, we're going to cover up our kids, fucked up drunk escapades maybe on a boat or yeah. whatever. And then you've got the retaliating family. And then all of a sudden, we're back to some other different, socioeconomic group group and they just they'll just dump them out on the road they don't care dude this is we're going maybe into some ozark territory with this this is getting wild all right let's hear the the gma wrap up here from this uh young lady and it's important to point out that alec murdoch everyone involved in the boat crash their families the smith family they all voluntarily gave dna to help investigators rule them out as suspects in that double murder investigation as for this most yeah but if they're a family of means, they're going to hire somebody to do the hit. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, they, they, uh, of course, we'll we'll hire somebody. Then we can pony up our DNA and we'll look good. Yeah, these are people that hire murderers. They don't murder themselves. Recent shooting, a Murdoch family spokesperson releasing a statement saying the Murdoch family has suffered through more than any one family could ever imagine. We expect Alec to recover, and we ask for your privacy while he recovers a very complicated so maybe this is different than what i thought (laughs) this is pretty wild i just always saw the headline and go oh he killed those he killed that wife and that that son uh because you know somehow that's easier than getting a divorce or whatever but now i'm wondering did natalie's family come after some sweet sweet boat justice I, I'm thinking I'm leaning towards that right now because if I'm going to try to stage a second crime to cover my first where I am somehow injured, I'm not allowing the headshot. You know, yeah, there's too 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 many things can go wrong there. But this does look like he's going to recover from this headshot. So who knows? I mean, was it a grazing? Well, we're not getting any details on this head shot in the head stuff. So the reason why I brought this up is because I saw this morning as I was watching the headlines. Uh, eating my my breakfast that uh, on the Today Show, some sort of news broke on it last night. So what we just played for you guys was a week ago. This is where we're at as of today of recording, which is also the same day that this episode is going to get released. So let's jump into this Today clip, which is six minutes long. So something must have happened that they can talk about it that long. Be joining us now exclusively is Alec Murdoch's attorney, Dick Carputlian. Dick, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Dick, you've prosecuted serial killers, university presidents, you've represented... I love Craig's voice. It oh, <laughs> That is the roughest voice in news. I mean, it is so scratchy, but yet somehow smooth. And I don't know if you know this about this dude, but he and his wife's like couple project is um, home decorating. And this dude has the most amazing modern everything's white and black home in it you've ever seen like this dude's house is fucking beautiful and that's just like what they do together like oh you know we we spent six months researching the perfect island for our kitchen and then we had a design and build and we put these rare metals and marble in it like that guy's house is a dream home um is he maybe does his wife maybe not know that he's gay (laughs) you can say that i can't (laughs) i know (laughs) <laughs> uh, some some characters over the year. You have to admit this is this is a pretty unbelievable story. Your client claiming that he paid someone 
to shoot him to collect $10 million in insurance money and the guy missed? Is that the story? Oh, <laughs> we missed the part of the story. <sighs> yeah, there was an article back below where you were at that said assisted suicide is what that was something to do with. See the arrest made in Murdoch assisted suicide. Okay, let's jump into Six that. Six hours ago? Six hours ago. We are following that breaking news from overnight. An arrest in connection to the roadside attack. Oh, this is some wild local news. Man, these two. There's so much to be said about these. <laughs> these two. The disparity here in the wardrobe department. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but this is crazy. This this lady on the left uh-huh. is already like this is some bullshit about this <laughs> about this whole story. Look at her face. She is she is like with white people problems right here. All I hear is just mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all now mm-hmm. of Alec Murdoch. Well, our Shannon Royster walks us through the new developments. South Carolina authorities say they took 61 year old Curtis Edward Smith into custody Tuesday. Sled says Alec Murdoch told Smith to shoot and kill him. They say Murdoch admitted to the scheme Monday, so Murdoch's son could collect a $10 million life insurance policy. Hold on, what? How The, the son's dead, right? No, he's got two sons. There's, uh, there's the one surviving son and him. The, it was the older son and the wife that got offed by that other family. Possibly. Oh, so he wants just out. He's he gone, but he wants that kid to have $10 million. God, what's the premium on a $10 million life God insurance damn. policy damn. for a person? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That's why, that's why I wanted to see this because it looks like that he, yeah, arranged for someone to come and shoot him and it went wrong. This is great. It was on September 4th when Murdoch called 911 shortly after 1.30 in the afternoon to report that he had been shot on the side of a road. A family spokesperson said Murdoch pulled off due to a low tire light, that a male driver in a blue pickup truck drove past him and then came back, asking if he was having car trouble, and that's when he was shot. He was airlifted to a hospital in Savannah with what authorities say was a superficial gunshot wound to the head. But the he got shot in the head, could still pick up his, find his phone, call 911. Yeah, that's definitely a superficial head wound. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if he hired this, this is so wild. This is so wild. Like, if he hired this guy, then so much of this story is bullshit. It's like, hey, meet me at 1.30. I'll be over on the side of the road. We'll make it look like I was having car problems. And You know what I mean? Like, this is such bullshit. It could have just done a home invasion, uh, whatever, if he wanted somebody to, this is really elaborate. Is he maybe... <clears throat> hiring this person to offset again people thinking that he had anything to do with the other murder make it look like that rival family was coming after him too yeah but this is what's okay so let's say that this guy is innocent okay and that the rival family natalie's family killed his wife and son first off suicide it's like a coward's way out. You have another child who's probably hurting just as much as you are. Cause we know we're going through this, assuming that this guy's innocent. Not so, when he gets that $10 million, he's not. Mark. Yeah. Well, that will fix a lot of hurt. Uh, well, at least the, the hookers and the cocaine will, but so you're going to do this side murder job, which then is only going to slow down and confuse the justice for your wife and your son, right? Like you've just now made this a thousand times more complicated for the police. So not only are you being a coward and turning your back on your family, but you're jeopardizing that any sort of justice will ever find its way to your wife and your son. And I don't know, maybe his heart was broken that much and he was that like, you know, stressed out in his mind, but you're also a guy that made a fucking ton of money off of the legal system. So you would know more than anybody how this is going to fuck it all up. Yeah. He should know that when a, a secondary thing like this happens, the first thing is, is benched it's it's not that important anymore and if he's this loving dad and he's heartbroken over losing the the wife and the son but yet he doesn't give two shits about the younger son he's just like well he just he'll get the money and that'll be fine he doesn't need his dad yeah. who's the only living close family relative to also be killed in a gunshot violence i mean 
I mean, he's. I don't know. Alex is becoming a dark character for yeah, us. Yeah, he really is. Uh, he's and just, he looks so much like a like a maniacal howdy doody. I don't know how this has happened to him, but yeah, he's a. I'd love to see video of the guy talking because just all the still frames just make him look like a potato head. The incident report released by the Hampton County Sheriff's Office initially checking the box, no visible injuries. Murdoch. <laughs> it just gets better every fucking piece of information. Man, I want to cast this whole thing. I want to see all these people and then cast it. I think that this would make an excellent episode of Fargo or, you know, like a season of Fargo. Cause you could just yeah. build all these characters. And the fact that you could go back into the backstory of the law firm and three generations of Southern lawyers and uh, the hunting range that they own. Now, see, that would be the critically acclaimed award-winning version of this, but I'd also like to see the dirty John season of this. Oh, okay. You know, or it's just the, you know, made for TV version. I mean, <laughs> I would even do the uh, Dateline version with the guy who's like, and then what happened next? Changing a tire. He got shot in the... Oh! Like, oh, you, you jerking off over there while you're reading the murder news to us, bud? Because that guy, what is? he sounds like the guy... What's his name? Um, it's close to the guy that sang for the Circle Jerks. Keith Morris or whatever. His name's something like yeah. that. It, that's that's what it is. Keith yeah. Morris. Um <laughs> He sounds like he like he's cheering on the murderer and all those date lines, and he gets so excited. And Connie, one day, Beth and I were down in South County, uh, in the bottom of Orange County, and we went to this place that we love eating. And on the sidewalk out front, that dude was reading the Sunday paper, and I'm like, God, I'd love to just sit down next to him. Like, here's fifty bucks, just read me out loud whatever article you're reading right now. <laughs> And then he saw the knife. <laughs> he gets off on it. I love it. Fox team pushed back. They released new details about his injuries. Entry and exit wounds, skull fractured, new details about his injuries. That's just, the, this is what the his team on the team. scene saw no saw no injuries at all. Yeah. At so first? police report says no note clicks the box, no noticeable injuries. But now the dude's legal team, uh Entry and exit wounds and skull fractured. So the bullet went in and out of his fucking head. And he was able to pick up his phone and call 911. And give location, give details, yeah. have remember what you know the person looked like and what they were driving and yada, yada, yada. I'm about we, gotta, we, we can't forget that this guy obviously comes from a legal family, a long line of, of attorneys. They called a legal dynasty. He's very successful. He knows every in and out and everything you can get away with. Yeah, yeah. I mean... It couldn't be more of an insider's job on how to play the system unless Alex, you know, it's like three generations ago, his great grandfather like built the dynasty. And then that guy's son, his dad managed the dynasty. But then this is that third generation where you get Fredo that fucks it all up. So maybe this dude's like the worst lawyer ever. Like maybe he's the guy from yep. the Simpsons. Yeah. Yeah. He could be the family disappointment. <laughs> saying he had entry and exit wounds and his skull had been fractured. Lead oh, the, because he's got power, Hampton County Sheriff's Office corrected their police report that there were visible injuries. So how does the fucking cop, this happened at 1.30 in the afternoon, so it's bright daylight. How does a cop show up and not see that there's a fucking bullet that has come in and out of a head? Right, because this guy has strawberry blondish, lightish hair, uh, either it was red and now is graying or it's just strawberry blonde. He's pale as the day is long. Um, <laughs> I mean, we, we have the same color. Oh coloring, yeah. He's in our club. <laughs> yeah. So if there's a, if the skull is fractured, if open, there's entry and exit wound. Where's the, where can you not see the blood? It would just be all over this guy's head, like a mess. This is fucking, this is so great. I'm so glad we dived into this today. Leading authorities to correct that report, now saying there were visible injuries. Murdoch's family has been the focus of national attention since the brutal unsolved murders of his wife, Maggie, and 22-year-old son, Paul, this past June. Are they breathing? No, ma'am. My wife and my son. And what is your name? Oh, that's his voice. 
It is. My wife and my son. And my son. All right, I'm going to try out for him. No, ma'am. My wife and my son. My name is Alex Murdoch. My name is Alex Murdoch. Uh, please hurry. Neither one of them's moving. Murdoch called 911. Neither one of them's moving. <laughs> I tell you, Will Farrell for sure can pull off that. Damn. I, I, the more that I watch this, the more that I think that the wife is just like very, Smoke very. Smoke show. Very sexy older woman. Hey, friend, I hope you're having fun with where this episode went. This is some of the most fun I've had recording an episode in quite some time because it just was so loose. Two friends hanging out, discovering this wild story together. If you'd like to be a part of next week's episode, you can show up. Any Circle of Trust member is welcome to meet me at noon Pacific Standard Time, uh, Tuesday, September 21st, where we'll do the recording for Wednesday's episode. How you get the link is I post the link inside of the Circle of Trust Slack. If you're not in the Circle of Trust Slack and you're a COT member, reach out to me and I will get you in there as soon as possible because that's really how you make the most of your Circle of Trust subscription and being a part of our community. And I'm urging people, if you are stuck, if you're having a problem with your freelance or your business and you just want to talk it out with a bud, please show up, bring it. I don't feel like people have completely taken advantage of what this series is supposed to be. I feel like a lot of people just kind of show up to watch me do my thing. And I'd always intended this to be where you show up and we work together with whatever your thing is. But if nobody comes, we can always just have a good time like we're having today. So no pressure, no hard sell. I just would like to really kind of urge people to take advantage of this series because thus far, I don't really feel like that's been done other than a couple of times here nor there. Let's get into part two of today's conversation with me and Connie Collinsworth. It's available for members of the Circle of Trust at AID.network, and it begins right now. On one she's, after finding, she, she let, let, let's talk about this wife for a second. Yeah, let's do it. She she's not got a lot to do during her days. Mm. She's uh, immaculate home. Yeah. Uh, very you know, um, not new money, bad decorated. Like she's got some taste there. Uh, she probably goes to these uh, what the, the what the ladies do, the ladies who lunch. You know, they do the yeah. uh, luncheons. The, and- yeah, the the ladies auxiliary. That's it. She volunteered at all at the boys' school. She was a she was a room mom when they were younger. She's in the sports boosters. She's not one thousand percent kept herself up, but that doesn't matter because no. she looks like she's got a good personality. Got good bones. She looks like she appreciates a dirty joke. <laughs> this is how I'm imagining her, right? Like yeah. uh, you know, husband's off doing legal stuff. She's in this seven thousand square foot home. I got to do some sort of work at the house and she answers the door and she's just got like a pair of black Ray-Bans on with the pony and like a strand hanging down. It's called a low pony, Mark. Low low pony, pony. low pony. And she's like, oh, you're here to work on the house today. My husband left everything that you need around the side. You should be able to find it back there. If you need an ice cold beverage of some lemonade or maybe a sweet tea, just ring on the back door. I'll bring it back to y'all. Exactly. Oh my goodness. You know, like, um, They'd have to color her hair, but Mara Tierney could play her. <laughs> she would definitely get this one. Yeah. Well, I'm going to think about this one a lot. Okay. All right. Wh- what's her first name? Um, I don't remember. Can we look that up? Murnoff wife. Um, Having a hard time finding her name. Alex Murnoff discovers his wo- Son Paul and wife Maggie. Maggie. Oh, Maggie oh. Murdoch. Oh, Maggie. Oh, wait. <sighs> Wake up, Maggie. I think I got something to say. To I was you. just going to say Maggie May. Woo. Maggie Murdoch, yeah. high school. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. See this photo down here? The four of them standing there, two in them. Yeah, click that photo. This one? We're getting a full body shot. Yeah. Oh, don't you? I think you got the wrong one. Oh, over here. Okay. No, right there in the white t-shirts white t-shirts i'm pointing at oh, my yeah, screen yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 okay yeah that's oh, yeah. a better situation than i thought was going on yeah 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 okay. i thought we might have a good head but we got everything else. yeah it's okay it's all okay yeah she's got on what looked like some of those pants you like um yeah the lululemons i like that yeah from yesterday's conversation <laughs> okay yeah 
No young yeah. photos. I don't know. Maybe maybe we caught her in some good photos here. She's wearing a fur in that one photo. Oh, I know. I like that. Published all over. Yeah. Um, Straight up. Support fur, but I like to see a woman in fur. I see that and I just think, uptown girl. (laughs) There she is with her hair pulled back. Yeah, I I like her. Yeah, yeah. This guy definitely did himself a disservice by off, if he offed this woman, because he definitely, he's he's like the, um, I picture him being like, he could also be a coach of an SEC football team. 100%, especially in this shirt, standing in midcourt in a college basketball arena, 100%. He yeah. kind of kind of looks like Chris Farley's character when he does the fan down by the river. You know who this guy is? Who? Like he doesn't have any of his good qualities, but he's Buddy Garrity. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the small town player. I love Buddy Garrity so much. Now Lila, now Lila, I work so hard for you kids to have a good education. Now Lila, I love that so much. Their bodies, both shot multiple times near the family's hunting lodge. His brother spoke to ABC News at the time, saying their brother is searching for answers. Is willing and still is willing to do anything that's, that's asked of him. He wants this. He wants this solved. Just one day before. Is that brother wearing a wig? I think so. Yeah. Before Alex Murdoch said he was shot, the law firm that his family spent decades building announced it had reported to law enforcement and the state bar. Hold on. Misappropriated funds? Wait, this is new information. <laughs> we, have, we, didn't get this, we didn't get this in discovery, Mark. Hey, yeah. We either have the best or worst true crime podcast that exists because we don't know shit. We didn't do any research. We're just living in the moment. We're getting this real time. Right <laughs> Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Okay. So Peters, Murdoch, Parker, Els, Troth, and Detrick. So he has There's, five. Wait, wait. The, the, uh, the, the name that the partners form up there is pumped. <laughs> P-M-P-E-D, pumped. So he has a law firm made of five partners. He's listed as the second partner, and that does matter in these type of things. Mm -hmm. His resignation came after the discovery by Pumped that Alex misappropriated funds in violations of Pump standards and policies. A forensic accounting firm will be retained to conduct a thorough investigation. Law enforcement and SE Barr have been notified by Pumped. So he knew that he was in legal trouble, going to lose his partnership, probably lose his his license. This is the third generation that fucks up the family's business. Probably facing jail time. Yeah. So this may be a legitimate wanted to off himself. Yeah. This guy can't do hard time, Mark. He can't do it. You've heard his voice. No. You've seen his face. No. He cannot do hard time in South Carolina. No. He would just be like a beanbag that gets fucked all day long. that Alec had stolen money from the firm. The South Carolina Supreme Court suspended his license. <laughs> Just imagine this guy trying to make it in prison. He wouldn't make it a fucking day. Oh, my God. It'd be season, you know, the reboot of uh, fucking, what is an HBO? Um, God, what am I spacing on? The Oz? original Oz, yeah. They could do a whole season about this guy. How fascinating was that character in Oz who was like a well-to-do member of society, was an alcoholic, accidentally hits that kid, does a hit and run. So you see like a regular person go into the penitentiary, the prison system, and just get turned. I mean, he just got worked. And it was awesome because a lot like how Orange is the New Black started out, it, those characters are there to be like, this is a normal person in prison. And this is how prison will rip apart. So you realize there's no rehabilitation. It's just pure fucking survival in this upside down world. Right. My favorite guy in Oz was the black dude that wore the real little hat on the side of his head. <laughs> when he showed up and lost, I'm like, where's the little hat? <laughs> I wanted the little hat to be on there so bad. As our Shannon Royster reporting, here's another look now at the suspect. Police say this is Curtis Smith, and he's also facing weapon and drug charges. You can also see more on the story on Good Morning America. That's Oh, we already did, baby. 
So okay, what what are the chances that this Curtis Smith we find out tomorrow in some breaking news um, had some pending charges against him that were going to go away if he helped this guy? Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Wow. So do we end it here or do we jump into the six minute today thing where they're talking?